Hey guys, if you're like me, you're always looking for better tools for working with color. I have here today with me Alexei Baronin, who has designed HS Love, and um, he's going to talk to us about it. Thanks for agreeing to uh, to come on my channel. Thanks for having me. So why don't we start by defining HSL? HSL is probably the most intuitive way to define colors, hue, saturation, and lightness. So if I'm working in a computer, it's very unnatural to try and think in terms of RGB, right? You know, yeah. there are a few people out there who can look at a hex code and say that's probably a shade of blue, but HSL is pretty widely used in digital art. It's a mm -hmm. model that you see in, in color pickers, but there are some problems with that. Some of them stem from the way RGB is being warped to fit into a cylinder, which is essentially how HSL works. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem by far is lightness. If you already picked a hue and saturation, you have a specific color, then lightness is okay. It works as you would expect. But if you're comparing different colors, you shouldn't even use lightness if you're, if you're doing that because it's widely different. Saturation also has the same problem, although it's maybe not as pronounced. Hue is kind of okay in HSL, um, although it's not quite uniform. Like if you look at mm -hmm. the hue angle difference between red, orange, yellow, it's a difference of maybe 20 or 30 degrees. But if mm -hmm. you change 20 or 30 degrees in the green side of things, some people can't tell the difference at all. Yeah, it goes back to the, the uniformity thing, right? The idea is that the numerical difference needs to sort of correspond to the same perceptual difference. This is kind of a quest. The yeah. whole history of colorimetry is trying to find a way to map out color in a way that is perceptually uniform. There have been a lot of attempts. The one that you chose is C Love, L-U-V. Can you talk us through why the shape of the gamut in HS Love, which is based on C Love, why is it like this funky parallelogram or? Yeah, no. this, this is probably the most interesting question. This was like a big revelation because I originally, uh, when I originally started working on HS Love, I was totally naive about colors. Every color is equal to every other color. It's just the simple math. Yeah. But it turns out that the colors really are very different. Some colors are impossible, like dark saturated yellow. So mm -hmm. to me, this is like the best explanation. Like you can have a dark saturated blue, for example, like the ocean or something, but um, a, a dark yellow is, is not going to be saturated um, or like right. a saturated yellow is not going to be dark. It's just impossible. So it's an irregular space. Can you explain why you wanted saturation to be a percentage of what was available? This is the only innovation of HS, <laughs> HS Love. There's nothing else to it. I'm normalizing the chroma that comes from C Love. When I was doing what I, when I was playing with C Love, I would try to pick a color with a certain lightness and chroma, and then I would try to change the hue, and then bam, I'm out of bounds. The color doesn't right, exist. Right. At the very least, you want to know what the, what the bounds are. A cool feature of this is if you play with the hue slider, if you say set saturation to 73% and then slide hue, it kind of traces a line that's parallel to the gamut at that lightness level, which is something I've never seen before. Yeah, um, this normalization, it comes at a cost, of course. And that's the the saturation in HS Love is distorted. Uh, two different colors, like two different hues. You can't really compare their saturation meaningfully or you're not going to get good results from it. So I also wanted to talk about hue angle. RGB has this conventionalized coordinate system for, for hue angle where 0 and 360 are red. In HS Love, the hue angles are a little bit different. So for example, FF0000, rather than being angle 0, is I think it was like 12. I guess it comes to the the different numbers that are used for for the primaries. I mean, something that's interesting about RGB RGB isn't arbitrary. It does it corresponds to the three cone cells. Long, medium. I don't remember score. which one is which. Yeah, yeah, right. that's right. And the Q, as as I understand it, it sort of cycles through the through the different stimulation patterns between the three cone cells. And I guess both C Love and HSL. They cycle through them in the same order, right. but the exact pinpoint kind of locations are different. So there's one feature of, of the color picker on hslove.org, which is this secondary circle, this circle that will expand or contract based on your lightness level. It probably is not useful for uh, using the color picker, but it hints at it hints at something that's hidden in, in the project, I guess. It expands as far as it can get until, you know, it reaches the limit of the gamut. So, but it remains a circle. And that's important because within the circle, you can pick uh, a chroma and you have a full range of hue. 
as you go around and you're never gonna go out of bounds. So this is kind of like a subset of the gamut where the chroma doesn't need to be distorted, where you don't have this effect where it needs right. to be stretched here and shrunk there. So if you're willing to give up all saturated colors and just limit right. yourself to the uh, you know the pastel kind of colors, then you can do that. And I did include, I don't know how useful it is, but I did include it in my project, HP I love, P standing for pastel. It, it looks really cool. It's very smooth, but I don't know if you, if you really want to use it. What are the problems that HS Love can help a designer solve? I, I think it is more convenient to use than a traditional HSL color picker. I think it's just, it's just more uniform. Um, right. But the real most interesting use case, I think, is for generating color palettes uh, automatically in some way. Well, this was a lot of fun to, to chat about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome.